Always fresh, every day. You're watching Fast Lane Daily. Ford says it's taking its latest fiesta on one of the most treacherous race courses in the world. No, not the Cross Bronx Expressway. Talking about the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, we'll have more. Also, Ariel preps an insane Adam. We've got new details on the Lexus LFA supercar, and we check out the latest on the motorsports scene on FLD Shakedown. What's up, everybody? I'm your boy, Derek D. You're checking out Fast Lane Daily on a Thursday. What's up, Mike? Oh, hi. Uh, we've got some breaking news that we had to say so we already wrote the show, and now that we're shooting it, we oh. have to you know, some, It just came in. Uh, General Motors said Thursday in a regulatory filing that had reached a deal with a committee of bondholders to give them 10% of the new company uh, with an option to buy up to 15%. It's a big deal. Wow. Because yesterday, as you know, we reported that, uh, that the bondholders had rejected the deal to own a piece of GM because they're the ones who are holding the debt, right. you know, all that stuff. That's so. pretty big news. Where could they find more information on that since we're just... Yeah, exactly. Our story uh, comes from uh, the NewYorkTimes.com, NYTimes.com, if you want to check more about that. So there you go. Just wanted to say that because uh, we're not going to talk about it anymore in the show. It's, uh, it's but we're fast and daily. Keep it fast and fresh. Always fresh. Always Every fresh. Day. Uh, you want some coffee? No, I'm good, thanks. It's fresh. Nah. Sure. Ford announced this week the company's Fiesta subcompact won't just show up in hipster YouTube videos. Oh, hi Tom. The recently redesigned subcompact will also make its U.S. motorsport debut this summer at the punishing Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Sweden's Oldsburg Motorsport Evolution team will field two Fiesta rally cars at the famed Colorado Hill Climb this July 19th. The all-wheel drive Fiestas will get power from a 2-liter Duratec engine tuned to produce up to 800 horsepower. Drivers Andreas Eriksson and WRC champ Marcus Gronholm say they're aiming to navigate the 156-turn, 12.4-mile mountain course in under 10 minutes to set a new Pikes Peak record. The Rallycross Fiesta gets a number of suspension tweaks by Oldsburg Motorsport Evolution, Swedish automotive supplier Allens, and Ford of Europe's Team RS Engineers. They're the ones responsible for Ford's FIA World Rally Championship program. Ford Racing North America is not involved in the project other than to provide assistance and logistical support. Ford also says the Fiesta will replace the company's compact Focus as the company's standard competition rally car. The Focus has scored 37 rally victories, including one this past weekend at Italy's Rally d'Italia Sardegna. The Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, known as the Race to the Clouds, is the second oldest motorsports event in the U.S., taking its name from the mountain peak above Colorado Springs in the Rocky Mountains. A far less potent Fiesta will arrive in U.S. dealerships by 2010. And the Ariel Adams' reputation as a track day super toy is unassailable. But that doesn't mean the company isn't completely bat balls crazy. The UK's Auto Car reports the company has revealed new details on a new 500 horsepower engine that'll power the flyweight racer. That means a power to weight ratio of 1,000 horsepower per metric ton, or like putting an SD's rocket engine on a balsa wood airplane. Like that. That figure puts the V8 powered Adam in league with super streetables like the Caterham RST V8 and Caparo T1. The compact V8 has four valves per cylinder and a unique cam drive setup. Insiders say it's the 2.8 liter Hartley V8 created from two Suzuki Hayabusa motorcycle engines. That engine also weighs just 200 pounds soaking wet. It's also enough to get the Adam 500 from zero to 60 in under 2.5 seconds and up to 100 in less than six. Ariel says the new Adam will put power to the ground by way of a six speed sequential gearbox and come with adjustable traction and launch control, which considering the throughput of this insanity machine is completely necessary. No word on price, but Autocar says the Atom 500 will be limited to 25 units with half already sold. And from the internet rumor mill comes new dirt on the Lexus LFA supercar. With four years worth of concept cars in the can and two appearances at Germany's 24 hours of Nürburgring, there's no doubt the LFA has been a long time in the works. It's obvious Lexus wants to get this one exactly right. And there's new word this week from the UK's Auto Express on the latest LFA specs. Word is one big holdup has been the supercar's speed. Insiders say Toyota bosses weren't too happy with a top number of 199 miles per hour, and they sent engineers back to wherever engineers go to come up with a higher VMAX. Auto Express says a year of wind tunnel testing, aerodynamics tweaks, and engine work paid off in a new Nissan GTR busting top end of 218 miles per hour. That, of course, by way of the LFA's 4.8 liter V10, reportedly producing upward of 550 horsepower at a 9,000 RPM red line. Auto Express also says the production model will get a new look that's not at all like the racing prototype spotted recently at the Nürburgring. And even after standing by, lo these many years, we won't have to wait much longer. 
The UK Mag says we'll get our first look at the final LFA later in 2009. You can find out more on those and a bunch of other stories at the FLD News Feed. That's fast, lame. Where's the feed? Did we beat it up so much it's not coming back? Is that it? We're reworking it? No, we actually uh, broke it. We broke it. Well, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties with the feed. Obviously, I've been hurting it a little too much, so we're reworking it. Cool. Also, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, so do that. We are on Twitter, Twitter slash Fastlane, Twitter.com slash Fastlane Daily, and Facebook. Let me get my dot coms right. Next up, FLD's Motorsports Review with Leo the Superente at Shakedown, coming up after I don't flub up this. For a bagel and cream cheese to be good, it needs to be fresh. For all motor news to be good, it needs to be best fresh every day, just like Fast Lane Daily. Always fresh, every day. The theme of this week's shakedown, tires, tire changes, and pit stops, because they seem to be the big factors in success or failure. Let's start with the WRC. A day two flat tire cost Sebastian Loeb time and a two minute penalty when his co-driver undid his seatbelt before the car stopped. It all combined to cost him a win and a podium. He finished fourth, this after six straight wins, five to open 2009, one to end 2008. Ford driver, Yari Mati Latvala won. Loeb champion rival Nico Hervinen was second, which minimized the points lead damage to Sebastian. The Indy 500. Three things determine the winner. Pit stops. Ganassi and Danica blew theirs. Penske didn't, especially that last round with 36 laps to go. Tires. There was no grip, so no ability to handle in traffic, so no passes. Kind of the boring thing. Why? Well, it seems that Firestone tested on 120-inch wheelbase cars at Indy before the race. But Indy changed the rules to mandate a 122-inch wheelbase. So, with no retest, you got what you got. And the third factor, strategy. Specifically, Penske strategy. You use the race to tune the car, you set up for the end, and you nail the last 50 laps. All you stubborn FLD viewers that dissed my Rick Mears interview, go back and replay it, because he told you exactly how Penske, strategy, and driving was going to win their 15th Indy 500. So there. So here's what I want, especially at Indy. New rules, open the tech book, and along the way, encourage the manufacturers to accelerate their green development by racing their hybrids, hydrogens, fuel cells, whatever, at the Indy 500. Formula One, hey, I finally figured it out. Braun is the Yamura team from the movie Grand Prix, and Jensen's girlfriend, Jessica Michibata, is the Braun button speed secret. By the way, she has a feature column in this Japanese lifestyle magazine, and this article is about dieting, but the real deal, Again, about tires. The Braun Aero package is easy on tire wear. The Braun suspension geometry works with both compounds. And the Braun strategy knew that running super softs at the start would give them the breakaway they needed to manage the race. Compare Braun to the others, Ferrari is figuring it out, and they'll be the rival to the end now. Red Bull is closer, but Vettel showed a huge drop off in lap times on the super soft. They've got more work to do. Toyota could generate no tire heat, no grip. Now look at the McLaren front suspension with, like Toyota, its big inverse angles on the mounting points. Too much suspension movement, and you get a lot of that at Monaco, running soft springs, tortures the tire mid-corner. So Lewis is chasing the front and then the rear of the car. No wonder both McLaren guys crashed over the weekend. And the pit stop cross-reference here in F1? J.F. Musial noted that on a bronze stop, the front tire changers struggled. But an assuring pat on the shoulder set him right and that tells you everything you need to know about the 2009 Braun team. They are your new champions. The Nürburgring 24 hour. Over 160 entries, 27 classes, and still the overall winner is the same team from the last five years. What is changing is the level of factory involvement. Audi sent over five R8s. Aston Martin had God knows how many DBs and Vantages. VW won its two classes, the two liter turbo and alternative power with its Scirocco's and the new CEO of Toyota drove one of the two factory Lexus LFAs. And the driver pool reads like a Le Mans starting grid. Heavy duty factory talent all around. Finally, a serious virtual racing league. iRacing.com has announced the start of an online racing league for 2010. To compete, you log on to the site, you pick from an inventory of cars and real racetracks. All you need is a PC, broadband, a steering wheel pedal set, and $19 a month. This is the future of racing and a way to get more young people, more people, back into the sport. 
The only potential negative is that iRacing has done the deal with NASCAR. So those are the cars and tracks you race. But you know what? All you wankers that diss NASCAR, it's time to put your foot where your mouth is and find out how tough it is to race ovals. You, I, may not like NASCAR and its spec series, Showtime Entertainment mindset, but respect the talent. And who knows? Dale Jr. is a big online racing guy. Maybe you can beat him too. Thanks, Leo. Jensen Button's girlfriend, Jessica, she's hot. Tarzan Magazine, really? I read Vine Life. Well, that about does it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. It's Thursday. You guys have a lovely one. I'll see you tomorrow. You're going to throw your nasty pen that you put in your mouth? I'm not going to catch it. Ah. Ooh.